week at the International Court of Justice. Israel's crimes were laid out for the world to hear. The court heard how Israel's military has slaughtered more than 23,000 Palestinians. It has heard how Israel's bombardment has displaced nearly 2 million, how its total siege has starved Gaza, bringing its people to the brink of famine. And the court and the world heard the genocidal words of Israeli officials. It heard their promises to wipe out, to erase and to crush Gaza, to make Gaza, as one Israeli official put it, a place where no human being can exist. So today, let's make a noise, let's raise our voices and pay tribute to South Africa for forcing the world to listen. But we know, the South Africans know, and most of all the Palestinian people know, that we cannot work or wait for the courts. We know that the Hague and its deliberations will take some time and every day without a ceasefire is a day where 247 more Palestinians are killed every day without a ceasefire is a day where the lives of 117 children are cruelly cut short every day without a ceasefire 629 more Palestinians are wounded every day without a ceasefire 10 more children will have one or both of their legs amputated often with no anesthetic every day the siege continues every day more palestinians will be pushed into starvation so on this day on this global day of action for palestine in our thousands in our millions we send our solidarity to the brave palestinian people and we say with one voice cease fire now cease fire now cease fire now cease fire now a few days after South Africa submitted its application to the International Court of Justice, I wrote to our Prime Minister urging him, imploring him to support the application to end Britain's complicity in this atrocity. But what did he do? He continues to reject a ceasefire. He continues to sell arms to Israel. And on Thursday night, he took the dangerous decision to join the US in bombing Yemen. Shame on him! Shame on him! Shame on him! Shame on him! So let me say clearly and loudly, I absolutely oppose that intervention which risks escalating into an even bigger, wider conflict. It should have gone to Parliament and even if our leaders refuse to learn the lessons of the past, let's never forget what this episode tells us that we have a government that will bomb a foreign com country to protect a shipping lane, one of the poorest countries in the world, yet refuses to call for a ceasefire to protect people from genocide. So let's say it again, Rishi Sunak, shame on you! Rishi Sunak, shame on you! Rishi Sunak, shame on you! Friends, I will finish with this. Next week, I'm bringing back my bill to Parliament to end arms sales to Israel, and I promise you... you that inside and outside of Westminster, in the streets, everywhere, I will do everything that I can to achieve an immediate ceasefire and to stand up for the Palestinian people. It is our moral duty to do so. So let's keep organising, let's keep marching until there's a ceasefire, until the siege is lifted, until the occupation ends and Palestine is free. So say it with me, free, free, Palestine. free, free. Palestine.